Hey, and welcome to another exciting edition of The Dame Show. What do we got on tap today? Uh, we're going to be looking at the loot crate we got this month. So that should be cool. Um, we got a game called Owl Boy. Um, kind of a platformer adventure game. Looks pretty cool. We're going to check that out. Uh, talk about what happened this week in comics that I get. I believe the only comic I got this week was Saga, and it was a doozy. So we'll talk about that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the NES Mini now that I've had a chance to play with it. And it's kind of like game design in general based on what I feel after I'm playing a ton of NES games. And of course a song or story kind of depending on where it takes us. And uh, so let's get started with another exciting edition of The James Show. First up is Loot Crate. This month's Loot Crate was Origins, and I got ourselves, now this is not Mario, but yet it is. This is Jumpman. He is the protagonist from Donkey Kong. Uh, Donkey Kong, if you didn't know, was a, uh, the girl's his name is Polly, and then of course Donkey Kong Monkey, and then Jumpman, who later became Mario. If you didn't know, originally it was going to be a Popeye game, where Jumpman was actually going to be Popeye, and Polly was Olive Oil, and Donkey Kong was going to be Bluto slash Brutus. But they couldn't secure the rights, but they had the game done, so they just did a couple of swipe sprite swaps, and magic is born. So, there you go. What else we got in here today? Um, a Captain America replica shield. And since, of course, the theme is Origins, it is old-style shield. Metal. You know, they try to make it kind of replica -y. It's does plastic, not leather, but hey. Comes with a stand. At all times, show your loyalty to Captain America. Or whatever you might want to display it for. What is in here also? A certificate of authenticity. This is an official prop replica. Ooh. It's authorized prop replica under license. Recreated for the master mold patterns and digital files. It's assembled and created with the highest quality materials. Don't you know? Oh, we know. What else we got going on in there? We have a... Mini Tiki, aka shot glass, mini Tiki mug. And this is Shredder. There's also one of the four Ninja Turtles. The cool thing about this, and I'm tempted to go and try to find them online, is they stack. So. Yeah, this one is Shredder, which I'm glad I got. I like the Shredder. He's pretty cool. I would be okay with the Shredder or Leonardo. Anyone else? Eh, not so much, especially not Michelangelo. I mean, some, there's Michelangelo fans out there, nothing against Mikey. It's just, if I'm going to get a one-off, nah, no, yeah, nah. A reprint of Action Comics number one with the, the Supermans, and of course, the little certificate of authenticity. This is an official reprint. Wonder if uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open it because I don't really care. It's an and it's a reproduction of a reproduction of a reproduction, right? I mean, wonder if it has the original ads in it because I had a reproduction once that had the ads in it. That was great. Oh yeah, it does. And the black and white, and it's got more than just Superman in it. If you didn't know, but yeah, it's got the cool ads on the back, like you know. Oh um, man, you can see it's not just Superman. There's like some police stuff and. A uh, black and white comic, no less. It's kind of neat that they reproduce the whole thing. And uh, there's a little comic at the end, on, and so you know, it's, it was like they were like comics, were like magazines back then, almost. You know, the pin is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pin. I haven't checked to see what it unlocks yet on, um, but you know, magazine will probably tell us because there is the magazine. Uh, the crate turns into actually a comic holder. Ah, uh, free digital copies of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 through 5 from uh, IDW. Uh, 
onto your Comicology account. Yeah, free comics. Yeah, my bad. So that was this month's a loot crate. Not too shabby. Um, some neat stuff. The shield's kind of neat. The, the comic's pretty cool, and uh, the tiki's cool. You know, not a uh, the t-shirt's really cool. I like the t-shirt. Not a super stellar crate, but a solid B, you know, C plus, B minus, which is respectable because I'm a very harsh grader, you know. So, time for some sunglasses to play some Owl Boy. So, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of retro feel. This is Owl Boy. Uh, right now I can spin, jump, fly. Action. This is the house I came out of. I'll try to go again. Yep. You can throw stuff. Some drink some hot tea. Ah, oh, that helped. I feel good. This was my bed. I was supposed to patrol. That's what I was told to do. So, look around. I pulled that treasure chest up just a second ago. So nice. Try this. Pull up the random antique Lisa. Treasure, Philip. I have no idea what that is, obviously. Oh, my weapon there. Uh, I know. Boss 
last time, dude. You know it. It's done. Of the Owlboy. Uh, puzzly platformer adventure game. Looks pretty cool. I'm going to look forward to playing a little bit more. So Mr. Sunglasses says, Owlboy's pretty cool. And it's on like 20% off sale. So it's like 16 right now, I think. Normally 20. Check it out if you like, uh, you know action platformer types, a um, little bit of adventure, and you like what you saw, I recommend it. What's next on the agenda? Ah, oh, yes. Comics. Uh, just to kind of remind myself of everything that happened in this um, saga this week was brutal. It was the end of a story arc. So there's probably going to be a break. And just to remind myself, sorry, I know, but... Um, yeah, yeah, that's just random talking. Talking about morality of hell. Um, last time, the Prince Robot TV head guy... Went nuts, so they had him tied up. Um, they asked, uh, he asked Marco, why did you kill me? And Marco's like, uh, that's a good question. But then he gets stopped. Um, then his mother comes in. So they've got a power cube. They've been sitting on this comet that they now think is going to be crashing into something bad and blow up. But they've been sitting on it because they've been letting their rocket, which is also a tree, build up power. Well, they've got a full power cube now, and they're getting ready to take off. And then the bad stuff really starts happening. And... Um, they tell all these little otter people that are on the planet, hey, come with us. And they're like, no, 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 we're going to stay behind. God will provide, he always has. And they're like, otter people, come on, you're going to die this time. For realsies, we promise. And the otter people's like, no, 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 we're going to stay. Um, meanwhile, the Will, which was his bounty hunter, blah, 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 he owns Lion Cat. Um, he gets shot, and his dog that's with him... Um, that he's had because since he got replaced Lion Cat because Lion Cat left him, uh, got shot and kid looks like killed and then he got shot. We don't know what happened to him. Meanwhile, the planet that they were on, um, the comet anyways, actually does get destroyed and they get jostled all around and um, during the jostling. They haven't completely revealed it yet, but um, uh, Marco's wife, Elana, is pregnant, but she says she can't feel him move anymore. And so Marco has these big ass ears, like listens, and he doesn't say he can hear the baby's heartbeat. He doesn't say he doesn't, but he does look pretty sad. So she might have miscarried, which sucks. Um, Meanwhile, the last scenes in the comic are of the comet and the poor little otter boy, who was the best friends of their daughter, um, getting consumed by darkness. You can show you that. And you can't see the word bubbles there, but it's him saying, but God, I believe, but God, I believe, can't you help me? Please help me. The last text says, and then... Right there in the corner. And then it's two pages of black. And then hence, um, the rocket you see does burst through and it is taking, leaving, but um, all the poor little cool otter people that, that we've been, you know, having it in the story for the last almost a year, I guess, are all dead. Um, and they, uh, the fugitives may have lost their 
second baby, their pregnancy, when she's like really far along, she's like ready to burst at any time. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a, a, an Empire Strikes Back type of ending. <laughs> kind of sucks. But it's, uh, well, that's, uh, that's comic fits. I mean, it's sorry. Sometimes you gotta, I mean, it is a war story. And bad things happen during war. War is not some little merry jaunt in the park. And, you know, the story has to have conflict and, and, you know, it's dramatic. And it's pretty good, but kind of sad. I like the other lot of people. They should have been able to have, like, at least one or two, you know, of her friends, the ones we see all the time, like, sneak on the ship against their elders' wishes. But instead, we got to see the poor little guy die. Pretty suck. Anyhow. <laughs> now that we're done being a bummer, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the NES Mini. Now, um, as you may or may not know, there are plenty of little hacks out there to put more games on it. My NES Mini currently has uh, about 790 games on it. Now, I am sorting through them and playing each of them at least for a minute or two and going, or uh, I mean, a lot of them I have played, but one to see if it runs because some of them don't run on, you know, the particular emulation, because, I mean, the thing was designed to run the 30 games that it comes with. You know, uh, just to remind you real quick, I'm going to talk fast, sorry. Uh, Balloon Fight, Bubble Bubble, Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Double Dragon 2, Mario Kart, sorry, Don Mario, Dr. Mario, Excite Bike, Final Fantasy, Galaga, Ghosts and Goblins, Gradius, Ice Climber, Kid Icarus, Kirby, Mario Brothers, Mega Man 2, Metroid, Ninja Gaiden, Pac-Man, Punch-Out, Mr. Dream Punch-Out, Star Tropics, Super Z, not Contra, uh, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 1, which, you know, I said Super Mario 2, Super Mario 3, Tecmo Bowl, Legend of Zelda, and Legend of Zelda 2. So it was designed to run those games and emulate those particular mappers and blah, blah, blah. If you want to know what mappers are and look on the NES, games have different, like, procedures that, that rewire the way the hardware works. You can look it all up. Um, but anyhow, so there are some games that just won't run on the simulation. Sometimes you can get them to patch to run. So I'm sorting through the games that don't run well or that just suck. Like, I mean... I remember both Adam's Family games. Adam's Family and Adam's Family's Puckler Scavenger Hunt. Suck. So, even though they're on there, I ran them to see if they run. If they don't run, I delete them completely from the list. If they do run, but I don't want to play them, I uncheck them so that when I finally have my definitive these are games I would ever play, I can do one final refresh. Um, so, there is that. But, uh, yeah, they've hacked it. Originally, you could get about 80 games on there. Now they've hacked it where they can do a folder system and then a big, long, you know, into swap kind of memory thing. And, you know, you can look at all of the, the, the specifics. I, can't, I understand the, the basics of it, but I'm not a really good explainer of, you know, it. And, you know, this isn't really a show about tech stuff too much, like that technical. Basically, it loads so many, can only load so many games into memory at one time. The folder system allows it to keep, the load the folder system in and then swap it out for the particular group of games. Long story short, you can play more, or you can put more than your regular old amount on there. So, I've been going through and sorting those, and there's a lot of really good NES games out there, and you have this for a controller. You know, that's it. And, I mean, we've evolved as far as console games to this. And the simple elegance of this and what they could do with it is really making me, you know, look at some game's design and wonder what they're doing wrong when they kind of write so often with this. It's like the more buttons, they made it too overly complex. And I mean, there's some games that you just don't need to improve upon the two buttons. And stuff. Most ba baseball games, for the most part, golf, um, you know, but those are more sports games. But, you know, just regular platformers, uh, action and jump. I mean, Al Boy, pretty much that's all I did. I mean, there were other little buttons like aim and stuff, which I guess make it a little more fun and interesting. But, um, you know, for the most part, Al Boy was jump and shoot. Um, so, uh, and just the, the, you know, and then A and B together, which they don't really do a lot of com button together combinations anymore because A and B together was almost like another button. It was almost like adding a, a fifth button because, yes, there's A, B, start and select. It's four buttons. A and B together is almost like a fifth button, and then you can do directions in a button. Um, like, it's very popular with, like, Castlevania to be able to throw your item and stuff like that. But the the, the way they figured that stuff out, and the way it works so well, and it just says so seamless, um, it's really kind of lacking in almost, in, in today, a lot of times in today's games, to just have the gameplay and the controls be that solid that it doesn't have to worry about the story, or, I mean, there, there could be story. Story's nice, I mean... There's plenty of NES games with story, plenty of without it, plenty of implied, 
but that's that's beside the point. Just from the pure design aesthetics, you know, uh, not kind of the aesthetics or the, the story, but just a pure design and gameplay. Uh, I think a little bit of that art that they they of working around the limitations and really making an elegantly controlled and you know solid game. Uh, I think they're losing it a little bit. It's um, you know, the game styles have really changed, too, if you want to get technical. I mean, first-person shooters were not a thing back in the NES era. Um, you know, and a lot of the, the more complex action games, the 3D action games and stuff. So I see that the control scheme needed to evolve a little bit, but at the same time, I think they really need to go back to a little bit of that elegant simplicity. And I think it would really make a, a difference if they would really think about it from that point of view rather than just, you know, what they have. Um, speaking of elegant simplicity and retro gaming, Double Dragon 4 is coming out in three days. Um, and it looks to be awesome. It looks like they took Double Dragon 2, have a new story and new backgrounds and stuff, and only slightly upgraded the graphics, maybe give a little sheen of anti-aliasing and then let it run on the PlayStation 4 and Steam. Um, I'm hoping that's what it is because uh, Double Dragon 3 was... Eh. It was hard, and really the way you beat the game wasn't to just do spin kicks. Jump in the air, do the hurricane, tornado kick, whatever they call it, over and over again. You only had one life, there were no life refreshes, there was a couple of places where you could fall off and die. Uh, the alternate characters weren't that great, they your other lives. Um, and, but it really comes down to, you were always outnumbered, and if you got into fist fight hand to hand, you were going to end up, the attrition was going to kill you. You just basically had to do hurricane kicks. The whole level. Hurricane kick, hurricane kick, hurricane kick till all the guys are dead. Walk forward a couple seconds, hurricane kick, hurricane kick, hurricane kick till all the guys are dead. Walk forward a little. It's why. I mean, it just it did that. Nah. Double Dragon 2 is where it's at, especially the forward, backward attacking. That was my number one love with Double Dragon 2 that they got rid of in 3, which I thought was dumb, which could have helped with the uh, um, being surrounded. You know, the A and B button, this was always attack in that direction. This was always attack in that direction. So that you can, you know, attack behind you just as if it, you know, while you're going, boop, 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 front, front, back, 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 front, front. Uh, anyhow, so that's my little rant on um, game design. I'm really liking the NES Mini. I'm playing it way too much, but that's okay. Uh, playing a lot of Blaster Master. Um, I beat Double Dragon 1 and 2 already once. Uh, played Double Dragon 3 for a second, was remembering how much I hate it. I watched uh, uh, Motherfucker Mike play through, which is convenient that he had it at the time. Uh, he's uh, connected to the uh, Angry Video Game there, if you haven't heard of him, Mike Matea. Um, and uh, David has been playing a lot of Kirby. He's actually getting really good at Kirby. He's on like stage four now, which is pretty respectable for him. I mean, I've helped him with a little couple parts. But, uh, I mean, he's beating bosses by himself and everything. So, uh, good on him finally getting into the video game stuff. Uh, I'm at Dr. Wily's Castle is where my save state of Mega Man is. Uh, Blaster Master, I'm in Zone 3. Yeah. And um, other than that, just kind of going through the games, you know. Uh, remembering some really good games that... Uh, I can't think of the name now, but Rare. Yes, that Rare, you know. Killer Instinct and all that stuff, made a really good racing game. Um, they used the same graphic engine for the ra this racing game that they did for another really good game I like in there. It's called Snake Rattle and Roll, and an okay game of theirs that a lot of people, my friends, really like called Captain, Captain Skyhawk. But the boat game is, I've never heard of it, like Cobra Triangle or something like that, I want to say. But, I mean, I'd never heard of it until I started checking out, you know, later on the emulation and the, and the ROMs and the, and the packages, looking at games that I missed. And it is really good. There's some racing, there's some action, there's some, it's just a really good mix. Um, so, Cobra Triangle, I'm almost 90% sure is what it's called. So, let's check that out. Anyhow. It's time for a song or story with my hat of the week, the Lawbreakers hat from a loot crate. Be there to suggest anything, it looks like a story, so or song. So what do we got this week? Um see how there's so many games on it. Maybe I'll sing a song about having too many games to play and not being able to decide what to play. I got a little device the other day, an NES Mini with games I will play. But I put too many games on my Mini, you see. I can't figure out what to play. 
Poor, poor me. I can't pick a genre to narrow it down. Action, adventure, just makes me frown. Role playing or shooter, or maybe some sports. Can't figure it out. Crying, quarts of water, no tears. Got too many games, over 700, you see. I can narrow it down some, but not enough for me. I've got too many games, too many to play. Gotta try them all. Gotta do it today. I've managed to cut 50 or so. Down below 700, 600 to go. The game for me, I haven't found yet, but I'm getting real close of that, you can bet. It's been 14 days now. I've cut it down to between one, this one, or this one and two. I've got 14 more. What am I going to do? Maybe I'll get a schedule and play them all some. And never see my family again because there's too many damn games. There you go. Well, so, recap, we uh, looked at my loot crate, played some Owl Boy, we talked about Saga from the comics that I got, talked a little bit more about NES Mini and my feelings on the game design elegance of the simple controller, um, sang a song about having too many damn games to play, and now it's time to say goodbye to all my family, J-A-M-E-S-G-R-A-N-T, not quite, sorry, not Mickey Mouse. Um, Anyhow, check me out at the James Show 00, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Daily Motion, Instagram, Vine, although Vine's pretty much dead on the Vine, uh, you know, everything but MySpace that I can think of, uh, Google Plus. And uh, until next time, I'm James of the James Show saying, see you later. Yeah.